Right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to look at, oops, am I recording? Yep. We're going to look at this uh, problem like we talked about last time. So if you have uh, exam corrections, just uh, turn it in, okay? So let's see. So the idea behind this is to find the transfer function g of s right there. Okay, it's theta L over EA. So let's just be careful where theta L is. It's the angular rotation of this shaft. Okay. So let's just mark some other, let's call this theta 3, I guess. And here is our theta M, the motor shaft. So today's lecture is going to be very short in the sense I'm only going to do this problem. So I want you to like uh, get a good hang of this problem. It's a nice problem. It uh, reinforces what we have been doing so far. So let's just, again, first understand the problem before we start going through it. So let's see, you want to find theta L over EA. So what's the information given? Uh, there is some information on the torque speed curve right there for this input voltage. Notice that there is also um, some inertia and dampening associated with the motor itself. So if you think about it, what we're going to do is, so this is the approach to the solution. We know the expression, and on the exam, I'll give this to you. Uh, it's kt over ra times jm. This is the transfer function of the DC motor. That is, the transfer function from here to here. Yes? So it's kt over ra jm, s times, uh, let me... Uh, hold on, let's just call this JEQ, and you will see why I call it JEQ, so times DEQ plus KT, KB over RA, okay? So let's just make sure that this is correct, and yeah, there it is. So let me just copy this from the book, put it in here, and there it is, okay? So KT over RA, I said JEQ, and you'll see why shortly, JEQ, DEQ, KT, KB over RA, okay? So what we have to first find is, we, we have to find all these constants, KT, RA, JEQ, well, KT over RA, JEQ, and D, KT over RA, JEQ, DEQ, and KB, okay? We find those constants, we get theta M over EA, right? But he's asking for theta L, over EA. So how do you relate theta L to theta M? Yeah, just go through the gears, okay? Just in a, so let's write that out as well. Note that uh, R1 theta M equals R2 theta 3 and R2 theta 3, uh, oops, 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 hold on, and R3 theta 3 which is the number of teeth on this gear, well, related to the number of teeth on the third gear, equals uh, R4 theta L, okay? So from here, let's basically get theta M in terms of theta L, okay? So you've got to be a little careful. So this is R1 over R2 equals theta M over theta 3, all right? This implies that N1 over N2 equals theta M over theta 3. This implies what is N1? 20, N2 is 100. So it's 1 over 5, yes? Equals theta M over theta 3, yes? So then this fellow is R3 over R4 equals theta 2 over theta 3. This implies what's R3, that's proportional to N3, R4 is proportional to N4, uh, is uh, theta, wait, wait, I screwed something up. This should be theta L. Remember, I got theta 2 from it. It's theta L, theta 3, okay, N3 is 25, N4 is uh, 100, yes. so this is a quarter equals theta L over theta 3, yes? Therefore, any questions? Hopefully I didn't screw that up, okay? 
Right, so... Mm. So it's called as 1. 1 implies theta 3 or, yeah, theta 3 is what we want to eliminate. 5 theta m, let's call this equation 3. Let's call this equation 2. Therefore, 3 in 2 implies a quarter is theta l. Theta 3 is 5 theta m which implies theta m is four-fifths theta l, okay? So now we can eliminate theta m in this equation, but we'll do that later in the sense, I'll just call this number four. We'll just leave it as it is, okay, for now. So let's now find all these constants so let's find the JEQs and the DEQs because I claim that it's easy. It's easy. Well, they're all easy. So let's just look at. Um, let's do this. Let me copy this figure again. So what? Uh, so we've taken care of this. Let me just underline this. Okay. And then we are going to find JEQ and DEQ. So if we paste this back again. So, JEQ is going to be what? So, what do you do? There are many ways to do this. What's one easy way to find JEQ? So, you reflect this impedance and this impedance onto this shaft, yes? Just remember that there is a JA and a DA. So, it's going to be JA plus what? J, uh, JL times first, you take JL, you reflect it onto this shaft, so it will be N3 over N4, number of teeth on the destination shaft, divided by number, te number of teeth on the source shaft, squared, yes? And then you reflect this fellow again onto this shaft, so it will be the number of teeth on the destination shaft, divided by the number of teeth on the source shaft, squared, yes? So let's just do this. So this is going to be, and now we can just plug in the numbers, okay? Uh, so it's going to be 1 plus, because if you look at this, right, this expression here, it's very complicated if you leave this in terms symbolically in terms of, it's a lot of writing. If you leave it symbolically in terms of JAJL and all this, so let's just compute it. So JL is 400 kilogram meters squared. N3 over N4 is, squared is going to be 1 over a quarter squared, it's 1 over 16, and N1 over N2 is going to be 1 over 25, yes? So what's this going to be equal to, let's see, uh, 5, 5, 80, yes? Goes in, 25 goes in 5, 5 times, 400 goes in 5, 80 times, okay? 16 times 5 is actually 80, so the 80 is cancelled, so basically this is 2, kilogram meter squared. So you get a 1 from here. Yes? That's nice. Okay? Same thing with DEQ. So D, so this implies that JEQ is 2 kilogram meter squared. So let's call this equation 5. Uh, DEQ is similar. Okay? It's DA plus DL times number of teeth on the destination shaft divided by number of teeth on the source shaft squared times number of teeth on the destination shaft number of teeth on the source shaft squared so DA is what? 800. Oh, 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 this is 5. Be careful. Okay. Because here is our DA. It's associated with the motor. DL is 800. Uh, N3 over N4. So I mean the same thing, right? 1 squared is 1 over 16. N1 over N2 is 1 over 25. Yes. So this is going to be, so 2, yes, it's going to be 7. Yeah. So this is 7 Newton meters per radians per second. Okay, or Newton meters second per radian. Okay? So we found our JEQ, we found our DEQ. So if you understand the steps in this problem, that means you really understand what we discussed till so far. Right? It's a nice problem. Okay, now we have to find uh, KT 
over RA and KB, yes? Because going back to our equation, we found these guys. We just need KT over RA. We really don't need RA. Because once we find KT over RA and KB, we found this transfer function, yes? So for that, let's use the torque speed curve. So I guess that's number three, if you will. So now we need to find KT over RA and KB. So the torque speed curve, TM, is given by negative 8 omega M plus 200. This is when EA equals 100 volts, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, 100 volts. That's the equation. Okay. Now recall that if you had the DC motor, so you had a little back EMF here. Here is RA. Here is IA and plus or minus VB. Here is EA. So this picture implies that EA in is IA RA plus VB. Yeah. But you know that the current is proportional. I mean, the output torque is proportional to the armature current. So this is TM over KT. Yes. RA. The back EMF is proportional to angular velocity. So this is KB omega M, right? Here is EA. In other words, my torque speed curve is going to be what? TM over KT RA equals EA oh, let's see. minus KB omega M plus EA. Yes. So this implies TM is minus KT KB over RA omega M plus KT over RA EA. Yes. Uh, we are given that TM equals minus 8 omega M plus KT over RA. Uh, oops, sorry. Plus 200. Yes. Therefore, uh, KT over RA times EA equals 200. Yes? This implies KT over RA is 2. Okay? And minus KT over RA, KB is minus 8. Yes? This implies what? KB is 4. Okay? So this is 6. So this is number 7. Okay? This is number 8. So let's see. Uh, oh, the negative sign just cancels, right? Because this is negative KT, KB over RA. So this is negative 8. So the negative sign just cancels. Mm -mm, let's see. Where is our little expression? So here it is. Uh, right. So let's do plug it on. Plug all of this in. Therefore, theta m over E a is k t over r a j m over s times s plus one over j m times d m plus k t k b over r a. So k t over r a is two. Yes, and I think JM is also two. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's not JM. Fix this, please. This is JEQ because that's what I used. JEQ, the equivalent inertia and dampening. Okay. So KT over RA is two. JEQ is two over S times S plus one over JEQ, which is one half. On uh, DEQ is what, 7, was it? Yeah, it was 7, okay. Plus KTKB over RA. Interestingly, we really don't care about KB. We only want KTKB over RA, which is 8. Okay? Yes? So this is 1 over S times S plus 15 over 2. 
Okay. So now, but that's theta m. This implies theta m over E a is that. Okay. We don't want theta m over E a, right? We want theta l over E a, I believe. So we want theta L over E A, well, theta L over E A. So what do we get? Therefore, theta. Um, so any questions on this before we move on? So it's again. Now just be careful of the JEQs and the DEQs. Just reflect them properly and finding the KT over RA, well, we really don't need KB, okay? And KT, KB over RA from the torque speed curve. Now let's see, where is our theta M? So it's four-fifths theta L. Therefore, uh, four implies theta M equals four-fifths theta L. This implies that, therefore, four-fifths theta L over E A equals one over S times S plus 15 over two, which implies theta L over E A is what? I think your book has a different answer. Let's see. Yep. So I don't know how we got one over twenty. So let's look at it. Let's say. Let's see. Okay. So let's resolve this discrepancy. Oh, need that. Okay. So this is the book. So let's see. So this fellow uh, is correct. So S times S plus 15 over 2. So the issue is over here, 5 fourths. Okay. So let's look at that. Mm -mm -mm. So the only mistake I could have made is over here. So let's be really careful with this. So R1 theta M, R1 is, well, the radius of this gear equals R2 theta 3. Yes. So what's the mistake? I just spotted it. What's the mistake? There's one, definitely there's one mistake. Huh? So yeah, it's R2 or R1 or theta 3 or theta M. That's fine. Let's just fix this. All right, so and then let's keep going. So this should be theta 3 over theta m, okay? So and then this should be theta 3 over theta m. All right, so then what about this guy? R3 over R3 theta 3, let's make sure I multiplied it right. So R3 theta 3 equals R4 theta l, that's good. So R3 over R4 is theta L over theta 3. So here's no mistake. So N3 over N4 is theta L over theta 3. And N3 over N4 is a quarter. Uh, let's just make sure that it is a quarter. Yes, it is. That's a fifth. Yes, it is. Okay. So here is theta L over theta 3. So one implies I want to eliminate theta 3. So it's theta M doesn't matter. I still won't get that answer. Theta m over 5. So let's see. Uh, no, I do get that answer. Never mind. Never mind. So this is theta. Ah. So theta 3 is theta m over 5. So plug that in here, right? Theta m over 5. So theta l 
ओके सो दिस इंप्लाइज लेट्स डू वन मोर स्टेप uh 1 over 20 is theta l over theta m so this implies i don't want theta m okay theta m is 20 theta l okay this is 4 okay there so so going back here theta m is 20 theta l so this is 20 theta l so beautifully enough You get one over twenty. Okay, so let's say you made the same mistake on an exam. All right, you'd probably get like ninety-five percent of the points on this test. Okay, on that question, because there's not a sign error. Right, so let's say let's do let's look at another place where you could make a mistake. Let's say you write here r two theta m equals r one theta three. Okay. But then here you write it correctly. That means it's a silly mistake, right? See where you lose points is if you consistently make mistakes. That is the only thing that tells. Well, it's not the. I mean, it's obvious that that tells anybody grading the exam. It could be you. It could be you. That the uh, examinee doesn't really understand the idea. Okay. And also signers, right? If you make it consistently, is the issue. All right. So this was a nice problem, right? In the sense, it incorporates what? It incorporates reflecting impedances. It incorporates the motor transfer function. This I'll give you. Okay. But what you need to know is this and this. Okay. And also on the exam, I'll on the upcoming exam, I'll let you use a calculator, right? the numbers may not work as nicely as this i'll try to make it nice so you don't need a calculator but you can have a calculator right okay so uh, that's all i had on tap for today's lecture uh, do you have any questions okay so what i'll do is let's see how much time do we have i mean like since it's 22 minutes so i'll go on till like 9:30 So this will set us up nicely for the next lecture. So let's look at some ideas, some some basic ideas behind linearization. Okay. So what is the concept? So basically, the central idea behind, or the ba it's not the basic idea. So it's only one idea. Right. So the basic idea behind linearization, and this is called Jacobi linearization, is we keep only the linear term from the taylor series okay expansion of our function so why do we even need to do this the reason is any practical system has nonlinearities in it yes so when you have a nonlinear function for example let's take our friend okay so f x so let's take sin x okay so this is 0 this is pi over 2 for example and this is pi all right uh this is minus this is minus 3 pi over 2 and this is 2 pi yeah So basically, this function is not a straight line, but it can be represented by a polynomial, an infinite polynomial expansion. Yes, that's the Taylor series. Okay, but the point is, so if we, so f of x is exactly equal around some x equals a. Okay, this is actually the Maclaurin series, but sorry, the Maclaurin series is when a is zero, but whatever, right? you can think about this basically the taylor series that's my point is the value of the functionality plus the derivative of the functionality times x minus a over 1 factorial okay plus the second derivative of the functionality times x minus a squared 
over 2 factorial plus dot dot dot. Yes? You, you don't have to remember this exactly. I mean, do you vaguely, have you seen this? Okay. So this is a Taylor series, right? Now, we don't care about the higher order terms. In the sense, these are the HOTs, the nonlinear terms. See the squares and all that? So this is what is also called as higher order terms. I mean, HOT or higher order terms. Yes? So what we'll do is we'll assume these are zero. So now, what will happen is this implies f of x around x equals a is approximately equal to the function at a plus the derivative at a times x minus a. Okay. So this is the linear approximation of our function. Let's apply this to the sine function. So before we do that, let's look at this function. So if I look at a linear approximation around x equals 0, okay, what does the sign look like around x equals 0? It's a straight line, yes? So let's see if that's true. It's a straight line with a non-zero slope, okay? Because around x equals pi over 2, it's also a straight line, yes? But what's the slope? Zero, okay? So let's see if this expression reflects that. So first case is sine x around x equals 0. That's our a, right? Let's call this number 1. So 1 implies what? Sine of x around x equals 0 is approximately what? Sine of 0, okay? Plus, what's the derivative of the sine function? Cosine. So it's cosine of 0, yeah? Times x minus 0, correct? So what is this exactly equal to? Sine of 0 is what? 0. zero. Cosine of 0 is? One. So what do you get? So this is 1 times? No. This is not 0. Careful. This is x. So what we are approximating around is a, right? So this is approximately, well, you know, this is approximately this, but it's exactly equal to 0. That's a good point, right? Plus cosine of 0 is 1 times x, yeah? No, I didn't say x equal to 0. I said x equal to a, which is, a, and a is 0. There's a big difference. It's a huge difference, right? No, it's not whatever. There's a huge difference. Okay. Sine of x is approximately x. This implies near. So whatever near means, that's the problem, right? We haven't defined near and we won't define it. Near x equals 0. Okay? Therefore, let's look at an example. Ah, it crashed. So, save this. You can leave if you want. Okay. So, sine of pi over 6 is what? Sorry? It's a half. Okay. What's note? So this is exactly equal. Yes. Note. What is pi over six approximately? Approximately. Huh? Yeah. What is three over six? One half. Therefore, sine of one half is exactly equal to one half, but this is approximate. Okay. Sine of theta is approximately theta. That's what this means, right? So in other words, this approximation is valid till plus or minus 30 degrees, right? Looks like it, but we haven't proved it, right? You can actually prove it. That is within the error, if you're willing. So how much error are you willing to tolerate? Right? Depends on your application. Okay? So you can be like, hey, what about 60 degrees, right? So 60 degrees is point, it's square root of 3 over 2. 
it's 0.866, right? And you will see that your error will be a lot, right? Because this approximation is not valid around 60 degrees. So in other words, this is the central idea behind Taylor series approximations, right? You pick where you want to linearize and find the appro appropriate linearization. So what you guys should do is remember we discussed that around pi over two, it's basically a straight line with a slope of zero, yes? And then you should plug in, well, it's, you can easily verify it, pi over two into here and see what sine of x is around pi, x equals pi over two. Okay? And we'll do it, you can just do it right now. And try it. And you'll see the approximation is valid, right? But, so we can apply the same idea to control systems that have non-linearities, okay? But you gotta be a little careful of the mathematical notation. It goes back to where Chris was rightfully confused about, it's this guy right here. So we'll look at it next um, lecture, right? So that's about it. Uh, in the sense I could go on, but uh, it's, uh, this is a little dense in my opinion. So let's look at, where, where are we at? Thirty nine twenty one, one thirty fifty. So, all right, two, 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 one. Okay, so like I said, we we're supposed to start state space. It's fine, right? We have these two catch up lectures because, like I said, state space is a little bit more mathematical. It's more mathematical than this. So what we'll do is we'll apply this next lecture to linearize nonlinear differential equations. So we can do the Laplace transform, right? So, and then we'll look at an example of feedback just to get you an idea of where we are going in 3720, right? So that'll probably take up all of next lecture. So we'll get back into state space, uh, week, lecture three of this week, and then wrap it up, right? Your next homework, I recommend you start looking at it. And your next exam will basically cover everything, including state space. So I highly recommend that you look at, you start looking at your homework because the state space stuff, it starts getting a little mathematical. Right? It's really hard to visualize it unless you know linear algebra very well. Right? And this, and I don't expect you to know linear algebra very well. So the meat of the next exam will be till here. Okay, but there will be one question on state space because it's important, right? There are modern control theory, that is everything done after 1960 is state space. All right, so we're done.